Hi, my name is Kim, and today we're going to talk about white-tailed deer. Welcome to McHenry County Conservation District's Wonders of the Wild. White-tailed deer are the largest mammals in our area, and they're called white-tail because the underneath of their tail is white. And it's actually used as a sort of a warning. When danger is nearby, the deer will lift their tails, show a white, almost flag-like uh, warning sign, and the others can all follow after each other as they run away. White-tailed deer are typically considered prey species, which means they're having to run away from predators, and they have to always be aware of where they are. So one of the things we say in regards to the placement of the eyes for predator versus prey is eyes to the side, we hide, eyes in front, we hunt. And that's how you can tell the difference between a predator or a prey when you're looking at the skull. Obviously, this is a male deer with the antlers. The antlers um, are shed every single year. So one of the misconceptions is that you can tell the age by the antlers, but it actually doesn't tell you that since they regrow them every year. What it does tell you is the health of the deer. And obviously this is a very healthy deer because of the number of points on the antlers. Now when they are young, they will only grow the first couple years, they'll only grow small antlers. And like a first year is called a button buck because it only has just a little um, bit poking up on the base of the antler. But otherwise, every year, a full rack of antlers. The reason that the male deer have antlers is for protection and fighting. If a predator should come upon them, they are able to fight back. The antlers are strong and they are pointed, but more often they're used for deer fighting each other during the rutting season in the fall when they're fighting for dominance in order to fight for a mate. Because the antlers are shed every year, that's actually a process in which the, in, during the late summer and early fall, they grow velvet on their antlers, and then that needs to be rubbed off in the fall. And that's part of the process of getting ready to shed their antlers. You'll see bark rubbings, which is where the male rubbed its antlers along the edge of the tree trunk, trying to get that velvet to come off of the antlers. One of the reasons why you don't typically find a lot of antlers laying out in the woods, if every male deer sheds one every year, you'd think you might, is because a lot of them get chewed up by small rodents. It's a source of calcium, and sometimes you'll find antlers, when, then, when you do find them, they'll have all kinds of chew marks in them from the squirrels and mice and other rodents that are eating them. One of the other things that you can tell about a skull is the teeth can tell you what an animal eats. With all of these molars here, we know that deer are herbivores, means they eat plants. These are grinding teeth. The other thing we notice is they actually don't have any top front incisors. Those front teeth that you have that help you snip or, or bite right into a carrot or an apple. Without those, they're forced to use their lower incisors on the top of their gums and rip things out. So when you find plants that appear to have been ripped off, that is typically going to be eaten by deer. If it's something low enough that a rabbit could have eaten or a groundhog in the summertime, 
um, you're going to have a very clean snipped cut because they have both the top and bottom incisors. As we look around this area, we see a lot of deer activity where they've been ripping the tops of the stalks off. So typically in spring, the female will give birth to usually twins, although sometimes there are triplets and there can be just a single fawn and they have spots which is contrary to what the adults have they just have a smooth coat the spots help the fawns to camouflage as they lay in the grasses or flowers or, or under the trees this is very important because the female doe does not stay with her fawns the entire day. She needs to go out and find food, but because she might actually attract predators, she will leave her fawns lying camouflaged on the ground and they will stay perfectly still, even if a predator comes nearby. They don't have a smell at that point, so a predator can't find them that way. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to respect the animals and plants in your local conservation areas and watch for us next time on McHenry County Conservation District's Wonders of the Wild. Oh.